Oh, my friends, are we ever in for a treat today? Because with us today is a woman after my own heart. She knows the allure of food, how powerful it can be from both sides. On one side, so damning to your health, but on the other side, so damn healthy too. And today she is here with us cooking in her kitchen. So excited for this, known the world over as a leader in the health space. She is a podcaster. She is an author. She is an influencer in the absolute best way possible. She is the one, the only Chef AJ. Thank you so very much for being here, Chef. That is such an honor, Chuck. Thank you so much. And I feel like we're kindred spirits because, you know, we both had issues with certain foods, not all foods, and we both pretty much overcome it. And now we eat delicious, healthy food that will help people achieve their goals as well. Yes, indeed. And I see in your hand, you are going to show us today how to make one of these incredible indulgences, perhaps I dare say a sweet indulgence, because rumor has it, you may have a new cookbook coming out, Chef AJ. I do. And I'm especially honored that you're having me on your show because it, the forward is by Dr. Neil Barnard. It doesn't come out until summer, but I still want you to see how wonderful it is to make recipes that are sweetened naturally with fruit, or as I say, from the fruit, the whole fruit, and nothing but the fruit. And this is a relatively new recipe I'm going to be making. It is called the peanut butter paradise parfait. So I'm actually going to be uncooking today, meaning no oven required. And I love recipes that just use machines that you can plug in versus having to turn on stoves and melt chocolate. It's just they're easier to make. And I feel like if a recipe is easy, people are going to be more likely to do it. You know what I mean? Absolutely. I much prefer the machines that plug in than having to do like a hand crank. I mean, you know, let's just make it easy. <laughs> what, I mean, what I mean by that is, you know, like we don't have to preheat the oven. We don't, there's like, it, it can be done relatively quickly. And this particular recipe, actually, we, I now live in Northern California and th there's so many vegans up here and we have potlucks every month and I always make this and it always goes very quickly. This is a little bit rich. It's a little bit higher in fat than most of the things I eat. But I realized, Chuck, that, you know, not everybody's just going to eat steamed broccoli all day. And that if I don't give people some treats, it's going to be harder for them to stay on the plan. I've been vegan almost 50 years, and I don't think I could have transitioned to healthy eating if I had to give everything up, including healthy desserts. And that's the purpose of sweet indulgence. So what I'm going to do first is because peanut butter is the star of this dish, the peanut butter paradise parfait, I'm going to make my own peanut butter. You don't have to do that. Feel free to buy store-bought peanut butter. If you have an allergy to peanuts or you don't like them, you can substitute another nut butter. I think sunflower seed butter, roasted sunflower seed butter tastes very much like peanut butter. You can certainly use almond butter. We've never tried it yet with cashew butter, but I don't see why it wouldn't work. But if you can do peanut butter, I always recommend to get fresh. And what I mean by that, even if you don't want to make your own, a lot of the, the, the healthier stores like Whole Foods, they have these little machines that you can just like put a container under it and it grinds it for you right there. It's just a more flavorful, rich, robust flavor than the jarred. And actually in the long run, it's going to be cheaper. I'm going to be using something called the Nutri Milk machine to make it. It takes exactly two minutes. You don't have to have this machine. Many other machines can make your nut butters quickly. A, a Vitamix, a Blendtec, a food processor fitted with the S-Blade, the Champion Juicer. But this one is super easy. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pour my peanuts in. I'm using peanuts that have been roasted but not salted. I do not care for raw peanuts. They don't taste very good to me. So I do recommend using the roasted ones. And I am just going to keep a little bit behind because I want to have a little uh, chopped nuts for the top. This is kind of a cool machine because it just does it on its own. You don't really have to babysit it. You just push the top down and then they have a little button right here called butter and that means nut butter. And then I'm just gonna put it on two minutes. Really one minute might be enough, but you're gonna see what we're gonna happen in two minutes time. Wasn't that easy? It took exactly two minutes. And the peanut butter, when you make it yourself, it's just so much more flavorful. It's so much creamier. But again, feel free to use what you have. I do find that sometimes the jarred peanut butters, they, they especially after you refrigerate them, they can get very hard. And we want this to be very soft because we are going to blend it in our mousse. I'm just going to take a cup right now of my 
homemade peanut butter. What's really neat about when you make it in this machine or really any machine is that when we refrigerate it, it's still spreadable. It doesn't get hard like commercial brands. But if you get a commercial brand, I do recommend getting one without added salt, added oil or added sugar. If you look at things like peanut butter made from uh, Jiffy or Jif or whatever it's called, or Peter Pan, you'll find cottonseed oil, you'll find sugar, and it's not so great for you. So we're just going to reserve one cup. And any nut butter could be made in this machine. And the peanuts you use, those were dry roasted as well, right? Um, I don't know if they're dry roasted. I use Trader Joe's. They say roasted. I don't think they differentiate uh, with the with the dry roasting, so I think they're just roasted. But I, I don't see why would dry roasted turn into a creamy nut butter? Don't know. Good question. I will research that. I've just always used the ones that say roasted and unsalted. I'm not sure if there's a difference between dry roasting and roasting, but I will find out. So before I make the peanut butter mousse part, and by the way, the peanut butter mousse in this recipe is a standalone recipe. You don't have to do all the fancy things I'm going to do to make it into a parfait. I love parfaits because they're visually very beautiful. And I find that people often love to have their own dessert rather than, you know, have a piece of cake. People like individual desserts. And so I'm going to make an individual one. But when I do it for potlucks, I do it in a trifle bowl like the picture in the book. Before I use my food processor to make a mousse, I want to do the part that requires a dry food processor first. And these are the cookie crumbs. So I'm using a food processor fitted with what's called the S blade. This is the Breville sous chef, no affiliation to this company, but it is wonderful. I always tell people with any kind of cooking equipment, get the biggest and best you can afford. And this is pretty big. I believe it's 16 cups and it's very powerful. And I'm going to start with a cup of water walnuts. You could probably use another nut, but this lends itself very nicely to this recipe. And I have a quarter cup of cocoa powder. So again, with anything, the best you can afford. So there's a whole variety of different cocoa powders you could use. And so what I'm using is actually the cheapest one and it's available in Walmart. And this is just Hershey's Special Dark. I like it better than the regular Hershey's because it's dark. It's very affordable and it works great in recipes. But hey, if you want to get fancy, you're welcome to pay $22 a pound for what I think is the best cocoa powder in the world. And I save this for very special people. This is Valrona. This is my personal favorite, but it's not cost effective to use all the time like the Hershey's is. Or if for some reason you're a raw foodist or you like cacao better, you can get cacao powder. Anything will work. And I suppose if you couldn't have chocolate, carob powder would work as well. I find that if you like carob, use it, but you can't really say it's a substitute for chocolate. It really doesn't taste the same. However, roasted carob does taste a little bit more like chocolate than I think the raw carob does. It's a unique flavor unto itself. Carob comes from a pod. It's a Mediterranean fruit. And for people that can't have chocolate, they often substitute. So with the food processor, with the S blade, I'm just going to zhuzh it a few times. I don't want to keep it running because I don't want a nut butter in this case. So that was 10 seconds according to the timer on my food processor. And what I'm looking for is just little crumbs. But this wouldn't be very sweet, would it? Because cocoa powder is very bitter. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my cup of pitted dates. And hopefully they really are pitted because I didn't check them. And now I'm going to run the food processor again. I, I don't want it to form a ball. If I was making a raw brownie, or some kind of a truffle, then I would let the food processor run till it all comes together and forms a ball or a pie crust. I just kind of want to make crumbs. So we're going to watch this carefully. So that was 15 seconds. But remember, if you have a different food processor, it may not be as powerful. It may take longer. So do you see what I'm going for? It's like, I don't know if you remember a dessert that was called dirt or mud, mud pies. And what they would do is they would take Oreo cookies and crumble them up. And that would be the topping for a, a pudding like or an ice cream dessert. This is perfect. If I were to continue running this food processor, what would happen is it would come together in a ball and stick together, which I would want for another recipe, but not for this one. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reserve these crumbs and place them in a little bowl right now. And then I'll keep them in a little Tupperware in my fridge because these can be used for other reasons. So for example, these crumbs would be fantastic on like fruit, like a sliced banana. They'd be great on your ice cream if you make banana and ice cream. So there's other things you can put these on. Chia puddings, just like a little fun thing. Kids seem to like them. So it makes quite a bit. So you've got a bunch of crumbs. 
That looks like a fun recipe too. And I think back to the fact that you have Hershey's cocoa powder there. And I think that, you know, for people who are just getting going on their weight loss journey, just to be able to incorporate anything that still has the name Hershey's on them, that's going to be like a warm hug to them. That's something familiar. It's not this strange, crazy diet that they're trying. It's, it's Hershey's, AJ. Like, do you still find comfort, even though you and I are very far along in our journeys at this point? But just to know that Hershey's can still be a part of a, a healthy diet, I think think that's pretty cool. Absolutely. Wasn't there a saying Hershey's the great American chocolate bar? So, and also, you know, here, here's the other thing, Chuck, is I, I recently did a class for a very small hospital in a place where literally the only store they had to shop in was Walmart. And they said that I could only use ingredients that were found in Walmart. And I don't shop at Walmart often, not because there's anything wrong with Walmart. It's just not close to me. And I was blown away that Every, well, not every ingredient. I, yeah, I don't feel, know if I saw tofu, but almost every ingredient we're using today could be found at the Walmart, including the date syrup. So that's kind of cool when you think about it. You know, I wasn't looking for tofu for that class, so I shouldn't say whether or not it is available or not. But it was amazing how much organic they had, and I was very impressed. Okay, so now I rinsed out my food processor because it had the chocolate crumbs in it. I mean, this recipe is so easy because it's just, it's like, I just remember one cup, one cup, one cup. So I have my peanut butter that I showed you how to make. And I'm gonna place that, oops, need my S blade, of course. Oh, gotta wipe the blade off just because there's a little bit of chocolate on it. It probably wouldn't hurt the recipe, but just we want it to look as pretty as possible. So I take my homemade peanut butter or any peanut butter. You know, the thing is even the natural peanut butters, when you buy them, they have that huge <laughs> layer of oil on the top. And then if you, if you kind of pour it out, the, I find the peanut butter can be very, very hard. So that's why I like this. So one cup peanut butter, one cup of date syrup. And I'm going to tell you all about date syrup and the brand I prefer because this is the brand they have both at Walmart and even on Amazon. I even have a Chef AJ discount code, which I actually use because I buy it in the gallon form. This is the only sweetener I use is dates and date syrup. I haven't had like real sugar since July 6, 2003. So I'm going on my 21st year. Hey, one hey. Yeah, yeah. Way to remember the day. Way to remember the day. <laughs> I mean, it's possible if I was at a restaurant or something, but not intentionally. That's for sure. One time I bought the wrong almond milk and had sugar, but not intentionally. And then I'm going to use one box of tofu. So for I was a pastry chef at a Los Angeles restaurant for many years, and I made vegan desserts. It wasn't a vegan restaurant. And for desserts, you want to use what's called the aseptic or the silken tofu. The water packed tofu is great for savory recipes, for stir fries, for air frying, but it, it doesn't have the right texture or mouthfeel. So you do want to make sure you get a silken tofu. Like I said, I don't know if they had this at Walmart, but they did have it at the main store, which is called Winco. So they do have these at regular grocery stores. They're also always available online. And it comes in silken firm, extra firm. It even comes in low fat. I like the extra firm if you can find it, but regular will work fine. What's nice about these aseptic packages is they are shelf stable for a very, very long time. And then a carton of non-dairy cream cheese. So back in the day, I would make my own and it's really not that hard to make your own. There's so many recipes that are available for free online. I've always used the one in Miyoko Shinner's book called Artisan Vegan Cheese. It's basically soaking cashews and pretty much it turns into cream cheese overnight. But now Miyoko's has a product, which is it's just really clean. It doesn't have any of the fake stuff or hydrogenated stuff. It's basically Let's see what it says. It says organic cashew milk, organic cashews, filtered water, organic coconut cream, sea salt. So it has a little bit of salt. If you are avoiding the salt entirely, make your own. But this is just like the real thing. There are other brands like Tofuti that, you know, uh, they will taste okay, but I don't know if the ingredients are quite as healthy. But we're very lucky that in our local store, which is called Rayleigh's, they do sell a wide variety of these non-dairy products like Miyoko's cream cheese. And so that's nice and creamy. And then, you know, it, the world won't come to an end if you don't put this in, but it really bumps up the flavor of your desserts. It's called vanilla powder. I am a little bit of a vanilla snob because now that I've been introduced to pure vanilla bean powder, different than the vanilla powder you can sometimes see that's white, that's not vanilla, true vanilla bean powder because vanilla after all is brown. 
it's it's unparalleled for its true vanilla taste. You know, extracts either have sugar in the form of glycerin or sometimes sugar or alcohol, and they're really mostly water. So if you really want to bump up the flavor of any type of dessert, invest in this. It is more expensive, but a little goes a long way. And I, I mean, it will it will change your dessert. So for me, I'd rather leave it out than put in an extract anymore. So that's it, just a few simple ingredients. Where's the top to my food processor? I love the fact that you just admitted to being a vanilla snob there. You know, everybody's got their thing, but I love it. Like once you get a taste for the real deal, sometimes it's just hard to go back, isn't it? It really is. And you know, I, it, I, off, I used to be a chocolate snob, but it is getting harder and harder to find Valrona and, and Hershey's is, is pretty darn good. But yes, I'm, I'm a vanilla snob. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's funny because I really love vanilla. Even, you know, even in ice cream, I, I would always rather eat vanilla than chocolate. Yes, ma'am. You know, vanilla is the second most expensive spice in the world, second only to saffron. Wow. And the reason it's so hard to get vanilla and it's so expensive is because even though everybody says they love chocolate, it is the world's most popular flavor of ice cream. And so sometimes you'll see imitation vanilla. You never want to use that because that's made out of like, a, it's, a, it's a byproduct of the wood industry. It's not a, a good product to use. So real vanilla is such a difference when you see vanilla ice cream with those little flecks from the vanilla beans. It really is a taste difference. But again, don't even include it if you don't want to. In this recipe, there's so much richness, it's not gonna be as noticeable as like, so for example, the one recipe that I have that I would say you really need the vanilla powder, I call it the desert date shake. But other than that, it's fine if you would rather use extract. I like to use an equal amount. So if a recipe calls for one teaspoon of extract, regular vanilla extract, I would use one teaspoon of vanilla bean powder. If I was using alcohol-free vanilla, I would probably use more like two teaspoons or a tablespoon because that tends to be a little bit less potent. So now we're just gonna run the food processor until it's creamy. Is it wrong that I just wanna grab a spoon and go to town on that as is? This, it smells, I can't tell you how good this smells. You know, if you're <laughs> if you like Reese's peanut butter cups, it's just, that's what it reminds me of, the smell. Oh, yeah. So we got to, here's how we're going to make it healthier and slightly lower the calorie density. We're going to use some fruit and in this case, bananas. Now, I'm going to show you how to make an individual serving and you want to get a pretty glass. This is actually a little bit higher than I would like, but uh, you can often find pretty glasses at places like the dollar store, like I did here or the 99 cent store. But it's much easier to do it in, par, uh, in a trifle bowl, which when we have our potluck, which is once a month I will use, like the picture in this book. And these, this I got this at, uh, at Bed Bath & Beyond and it's a very beautiful presentation doing desserts this way. So what we wanna do is we wanna reserve a little bit of nuts for the top, just for a sprinkle. So I have this little nut chopper here and you can feel free to chop nuts any way you like. If you prefer to do them by hand with a knife, I don't have the best knife skills of a chef. So what I do is this my little chopper. very quickly. That's a great way to get out the frustration oh, yeah. of the day. <laughs> you can do this for like a little bit. Of, like I give my dog Karis, this is, um, you can do it as fine or as coarse as you like, but this will just be like for presentational purposes. And for our banana, as much as I love bananas like this for freezing, for smoothies or for nice cream, you know, with nice and spots for this, this recipe is already mm -hmm. so sweet. You want to choose bananas that I actually prefer the taste of bananas when they're still a little green, but for this, they're firmer and they're just better if you don't have them overly ripe for this recipe. So we're just gonna take one banana. Remember that show, Banana Splits? Did you see that? Oh yeah, back in the day, you betcha. That was, that was a Saturday morning staple. Oh, love that show. Flegel, Drooper, one banana, two banana, three banana. <laughs> So I, I love tools. You don't need them. You can use a knife, but this is kind of cool. And what it does is it just makes the banana perfect. And when it won't peel from one end, you just peel it from the other end. When you peel it from the other end, it doesn't break. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take my slices and just make them. Isn't that cool? Just makes them all the same size. That's awesome. Now I see a little bit of browning on the inside of that banana. What are some of the things that we should be looking for to know that uh, that's still okay? What what still gets the green light and when should we know? Eh, you I might want to avoid I, that. I think it's fine, but I'll tell you, 
have you ever noticed in a grocery store often the the people that are bagging are very young like teenagers oh yeah what they do is they at least in my store they'll put the bananas at the bottom bananas are fragile you have to have them kind of like in their own little kingdom you know i even if you ever go on an airplane with a banana the minute you take off it's like already mush i don't know what it is about bananas they're a very sensitive fruit treat them kindly but i think a little bit of bruising from that one piece is fine oops it just fell down but all right down so now yeah one banana down so what we're going to do and by the way this will thicken much more in your refrigerator when you refrigerate it so what we're going to do is we're going to take some and place it on the bottom of our cup and i could have started with a layer of chocolate crumbs too there's really no right or wrong way to la layer your dessert you know just you try to do it as pretty as possible and i already got a little bit of schmutz on the side so what i'll do you know, one of the things when I was the pastry chef, thank goodness I wasn't the plater. There was a guy named Arthur. He did that. He made every plate beautiful. But you can often correct any mistake you have with a little paper oh, it's towel. It's such an art. It's and, such an art. It really is. Well, you know what they say. We I, 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 we eat with our eyes, not literally. So we've got our first layer. And then we're going to take our crumbs and make a crumb layer. This will make it pretty, very pretty from the side. And then we're gonna take some bananas, place them around. And again, we can repeat the layers. I'm actually gonna be giving this to a local vegan restaurant owner to share with his wife. So I don't mind like doubling up and making it bigger than a normal serving so that they can share it. But we've got our layers of bananas right here. Do a few more crumbs if you want, you know, no reason you can't. And if for some reason you don't like chocolate or you don't want the crumbs, you could just layer it with peanut butter and banana. And we'll do another layer. That alone, peanut butter and bananas. I mean, I've been known to just have uh, roasted peanuts and a banana as a snack, and oh I'm just God. in heaven. I almost yeah, called it. this the Elvis, except I don't think there was any chocolate in any Elvis's <laughs> and his dessert. So you kind of like, you know, you kind of see the bananas. They're kind of sticking out. So we'll put another layer of bananas. If I wanted to put another banana, I could. I like cutting the banana thin because, you know, you get more slices of it that way. If I'm doing in a trifle bowl, though, I will work from the outside in so that the presentation on the outside is more spectacular. And then another layer of crumbs. Oh, man, this is so, this is so good. I'm not just saying that because I made it. It just really, everybody that eats it up here says it's amazing. And, you know, we could stop there. But hey, why stop? When Keep on going. Still, I mean, if there's still room in the glass, right? Waste not, want not. And that includes the space in that glass, Chef yeah. AJ. I'm not going to go all the way to the top, but I think for this layer, yeah, just do a little crumb, not as many. And how about our little nuts on top? Oh, look at that. I mean, this is, this is, this is, remember the Buster Bar from Dairy Queen? Oh, God. This kind of reminds me of that. Do you remember that one from Dairy Queen? Take Cody? me back again. We got Oops. the banana splits. And now we got the Buster Bar, the Killer Bees. Yes, is, ma'am. This is not a difficult recipe to make. Again, don't worry about making your own peanut butter. Don't worry about the vanilla powder. Just use the ingredients you have. Of course, you will want to, you know, to get the tofu and the non-dairy cream cheese, which are much more readily available pretty much everywhere. People do love this, and the presentation is so pretty. And uh, I hope you give it a try because it's really good. I've tasted it and I'm not lying. It's delicious. I would call that peanut butter paradise for sure. I mean, very well named. The peanut butter paradise parfait from the forthcoming mm -hmm. Chef AJ Sweet mm -hmm. Indulgence coming this summer. Uh, man, I mean, as a guy who loves him some peanut butter and uh, I'm like you, I'm a vanilla guy, but there's something about peanut butter and chocolate mm -hmm. that just go mm -hmm. together. They, they, they're like a, they're like you and Dr. Bernard, a match made <laughs> Yeah. That's so good. That is so good. Um, listen, as long as I've got you here, I've had so many questions, AJ, sure. from exam roomies who were super excited that you were coming on the show today. And I just thought it'd be kind of fun to open up the mailbag and, and do a little uh, Q&A with you here uh, as you let that aroma of the peanut butter paradise waft well, through can the I kitchen. Just one product I forgot to mention. I For sure. It, but um, date syrup may not be something that all your viewers are familiar with. And all date syrup is 
are dates that have been boiled. You can make it yourself. It's just kind of labor intensive. And now that Walmart and Amazon sell my favorite organic brand, I love Date Lady, I stopped making it because it's, it's just not worth it. However, these are small bottles. So Chef AJ gets the gallon because it's just like cheaper that way. So this is my favorite sweetener if I'm going to use a sweetener right after whole dates. I love that. Get it by the gallon. Why not? Yeah, so I mean, good. Last. So yeah, it's. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see here. Uh, we've got a longtime fan of yours by the name of Allison Mahoney. She's a big supporter of the exam room podcast as well. Hi, Allison. Uh, she says chef AJ is my favorite. OMG. She balances healthfulness, flavor, and cooking easily. I love um, her. She loves your three ingredient waffles with the oats, the bananas, and applesauce. She also loves your sweet potato kale chili and the black bean mushroom chili. Hello. Oh, that's thank you. That's a very popular recipe. I love easy recipes, Chuck. I went to culinary school, but I don't know how anybody cooks like that, honestly. I mean, I, I don't know either. I'm all about the easiness, but you know what? There's it doesn't need to be a laundry list of ingredients to have amazing flavor. So Allison's question is uh, whether you've refined these recipes over time in response to some new nutrition info that may have emerged since you first came up with these. That's a great question. So I, I don't know if I refine them based on nutrition info, but I try to refine them based on the principles of calorie density, which I don't didn't always know. So for example, I used to eat a much higher fat diet and I was much more heavy myself. I was at one time 70 pounds heavier than I am now. So it's it, nuts and seeds, those kind of things are very healthy, but they're very calorically dense. So this is really like a special occasion treat. So the waffle that you mentioned is very low calorie density. It's a banana, it's oats and it's applesauce. So as I have matured in life, I've tried to tweak the recipes when possible to make them lower calorie density. So for example, this recipe could be made lower in calorie density. How? I'll let you see if you come up with an answer and then I'll tell you two ways. So one way is instead of peanut butter to use a product called PB2. I am not familiar with that product, but a lot of people love it and it's much lower in fat. So you could make your peanut butter out of the PB2. The other way is to substitute for the cookie crumbs oats instead of nuts. Nuts are about 3,200 calories per pound. Oats are 500 calories per pound or something like that. So so there, that's what I do more is not to base it on nutritional stuff because let's face it, with desserts, I, I feel like they're, they're, they're meant to be treats. So I'm not looking to make like a kale blueberry dessert. Although you could, you know, it's called a smoothie, but um, that's what I do is to try to make things as healthy as possible. But my, my rules are basically no vegan, of course, whole food, plant exclusive, no sugar, no oil, no salt. And really, I try not to use flour unless I absolutely have to. Let's grab a question from David. David's looking for some help on what to stock up in his pantry. He wants to know what would be on Chef AJ's list of pantry items to buy that would make a wide variety of healthy vegan meals and save families time, money, energy, and stress when planning and prepping. What do you got for him? I wish you could actually go into my pantry. So the first thing <laughs> is legumes. It can be canned, it can be dried, but I think even if you like to cook your beans and lentils from scratch, there's nothing wrong in having cans on hand. They do have cans now that are salt-free, that are BPA-free, so a wide variety of some kind of legumes, even lentils now come in cans because you can make a really quick meal if you have those. One of my favorite products to have on hand are canned tomato products, again, in BPA-free cans, my favorite brand. It's called Muir Glen because they're fire roasted. They come both salt free and with salt. So I can, I'm just kind of visualizing what's in my pantry. A lot of big box stores like Costco have really uh, affordable prices on things like say tomato paste. I don't use it all the time, but it's so cheap to buy that there or canned pumpkin, for example. So I have a lot of canned pumpkin. I can use that in recipes. You want to have starchy staples. So for example, rice, beans, potatoes, those kind of things, whatever your favorite is. So I always have several varieties of whole grains in my pantry. My favorites are, are basmati rice. So I have organic white and organic brown. A company I like is called uh, Lundberg because supposedly the soil has less arsenic, but also because it's very tasty and it's also organic, but you're also going to see quinoa in there, millet, 
you're going to see buckwheat and you're going to see wild rice. So I always have grains, but sometimes I'm really busy and don't have time to cook grains from scratch. So in my freezer, I have already cooked brown rice and white rice, organic. Many of the stores sell it, even regular grocery stores. And all I have to do is microwave it for three minutes. I always have oats. You can buy those in Big stores like Winco, 25, 50 pound bags. Same with rice, by the way, Costco too, rice and beans. I don't buy quite that many, but I always have rolled oats because I use them not only to make things like oatmeal, but I use them in a lot of my dessert recipes. I will have nuts and seeds. Uh, what else is in there? Well, I have, I have some date syrup. Uh, so, so some things that I'm going to the gallon, no less. <laughs> Uh, the seasonings. Oh, seasonings. So important. So I prefer not to use salt. I'm not perfect. I have some condiments with salt, but I have pretty much every standard seasoning that, that you can think of. You know, my favorite is smoked paprika. So I have a lot of that, a lot of chipotle powder. I do buy a lot of the salt-free brands from specialty places like local spicery, like Salacious or Benson's Table Tasty. So I always have spices. Trying to think what else is in there. Oh, uh, fruit. So I, I prefer fresh fruit, obviously, but I do have some canned fruit on hand, like unsweetened pineapple in its own juice that I can use to make ice cream in my Ninja Creamy or when I make a stir fry. I also have canned pears in their own juice in there. I'm doing pretty good without having to look to try to remember what's in there. It's shaped like an L. So it's, uh, it's, oh, vinegar, vinegar. I love vinegar and I love every kind of vinegar. I have apple cider vinegar, white vinegar, rice vinegar, unsweetened, of course, balsamic vinegar. And many of the higher end, we say higher end meaning higher price because they're reduced and flavored California balsamic type vinegar. So lots of those. And I got paper towels in there too. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely a pantry staple. Um, yeah. Let's grab a couple more. You mentioned spices. Ankit is uh, very much a big fan. Says that spices and herbs, they can just bring out the flavor in Excellent. virtually any dish. Uh, wants to know though, what are your regular spices? What are the mixes that you use the most? And do you have ones for special occasions and then your day-to-day -day blends? So I, if I'm trying to recreate something that tastes salty, and I don't want to use salt. My favorites are ones that are already, I'm buying them from companies, Benson's Table Tasty and Salacious from Local Spicery. And Salacious basically has something in it called sumac. And sumac is a wonderful spice, even on its own, that it's not salty, but it has kind of a sour flavor. And I know that sounds kind of weird, but your taste buds are salt and sour, apparently are very close together. And it just, it just makes food really, really yummy. For me, I love smoked paprika. I don't know why, but I put it in all different kinds of ethnicity cuisines. I put it in my chilies. I put it in my, like if I'm making a faux cheese sauce, but a smoked paprika with a little bit of chipotle powder is just one of my go-to combinations. So, oh, I forgot to mention, you know, citrus. So I don't always have fresh lemons and lime. So I do have bottled organic lemon juice and lime juice, both in my pantry and in my refrigerator. So that is one thing I have. Uh, you know, I love also using fresh herbs. So for example, scallions, the green part of the green onion, any dish you make, you want to like, you can finish, like, you know, you're putting it on top at the end, whether it's a stir fry or a chili, anytime you put green onions on a dish to me, it bumps up the flavor, the nutrition, and, and actually the beauty of the dish. So I feel that for spices, it's a very individual thing. Some people like very spicy food. Some people like my husband, not so much. There's a wonderful book called the vegetarian flavor Bible. And what's nice about this book is for people that like really have to know what goes with what it, it tells you, like it, it gives you the profile of what spices go best with certain kinds of vegetables, certain kinds of soups. So that's a book that I recommend to people that are really having trouble figuring how to spice the food. But, you know, like I, I, I always used, I used to go to Sephora when I lived in LA and they'd have makeup classes and they would teach you how to do your makeup. And then they would say, but there are no rules. Wear what you like. And it's the same thing with spices, even though traditionally certain spices pair well with other ingredients. It's really, you're the only one that's eating in your own mouth. So it's really going to be what you like. And I forgot one, one spice I always have is cinnamon. Cinnamon is like amazing. And so I, I can't imagine not, you know, having cinnamon. It's especially the Saigon cinnamon, the one that actually tastes like sugar. So spice it to your heart's content the way you like it. Yeah, there's no wrong answer. I feel like you're almost like the Bob Ross of the kitchen. You know, there's no mistakes, right? Well, here's the thing. The nice thing about cooking is if there is a mistake, you get to eat your mistake. And one of the <laughs> I learned, you know, it's funny because I 
gone to school and college. I don't remember, you know, nine tenths of what I learned. But the two things that I remember most about culinary school, because it was, you know, almost 25 years ago, is one of the things they taught is this idea of mise en place, where when you're making a recipe, I when I came on to do the show, I didn't run to every single pantry refrigerator to get my ingredients. All my ingredients were here. So that made it a lot easier. And for the most part, they were measured. And that really helps even if you're just a home cook making dinner. But the other thing they taught at our culinary school, which I think is really great because people just want recipes and recipes. There's enough recipes out there. You've got to learn some of the fundamentals, which is why I like to teach cooking classes in an interactive manner where I'm actually watching people in their own home cook, which is it's not what you can make, it's what you can fix. Now, are there certain things that are probably not fixable? Probably. Usually if you put too much heat, like too much hot sauce in a dish or too much salt, you're probably not going to be able to fix it unless you double, triple, or add more ingredients. But some of the most wonderful recipes that I've created or that I've heard other people create have come from mistakes or from leftovers or from actually running out of an ingredient. So just try to, you know, feel free to color outside the lines. I will say, especially in my book, if you're doing a baked recipe, like if you're baking the cake, please follow that recipe because with baking, it's a science. You know, you can't just say, well, she said I could do what I want. So I'm going to put a cup of baking soda in. That won't work. I did something once. I put too much baking soda in. This was hilarious. Thank God for my husband. And it, I was blending it and I didn't realize I put too much. And it's just like I Love Lucy. It just kept rising to the top, to the top. It overflowed. It messed up the whole kitchen. So for baking, you kind of want to follow the recipe. And my advice is, in general, when you make a recipe, if you have the ingredients, follow it the way the chef intended or the recipe created the first time and then make your own variations. But with things that are like raw or uncooked, there's no reason you can't play around with this recipe and tweak it to your liking, you know, changing the nut, changing, changing the fruit. I mean, peanut, I don't know what else, what fruit would go great with peanut butter other than, well, oh, I have an idea. So here's another idea. I just thought of this. So what do we think of often? What do we often eat peanut butter with? I mean, everything, to be honest with you. Uh, but I, peanut butter and jelly. Yes. Thank yes. you. Yes. Okay. So, so in my brain, I'm thinking, okay, so if somebody doesn't like chocolate, whatever. They, you know, they can't have nuts. Well, if they can't have nuts, they probably can't have the peanut, even though it's a legume. But what if we layered the parfait with a jam, like whatever your favorite jam is, and you can get them fruit sweetened, whether it's grape jam or cherry jam, wouldn't that be yummy? I think it would be delicious, for example. What if somebody had cinnamon raisin toast? For example, my husband eats the Ezekiel cinnamon raisin toast. What if I toasted that? What if I wished it in the food processor. What if those were my crumbs? So one of the things I love about teaching, especially hands-on is because I want people to get creative and I love it when we're out of an ingredient or something doesn't work because that's the only way you're going to ever learn to be your own recipe creator or grow and probably make a better recipe than what I originally intended. And I'm trying to think of a real live example where that, that happened. Yeah, or combining things. So for example, I do another topping like this crumb topping, but it's, it's this vanilla with streusel type ingredients. And we did this in a class once. And then somebody said, well, can I put it on my apple pie? And I'm like, well, sure, why not? And so like we changed the recipe. So now we bake it with the streusel topping. So feel free to combine from different sources and create your own recipes. I think that's the fun of cooking, not just following somebody's recipe to a tea. You know, I'm glad that you mentioned your husband, Charles, uh, a, a few times now, because Mary is wondering, what is Charles's favorite Instapot recipe? What does he get in your ear and say, hey, honey, would you make this for me? Uh, I, he's standing right here. I'm going to let him answer and I'm going to answer what I think it is after. Uh, oh, it's kind of like, you know, what, what is it? The, the newlywed game. Only you guys have been married a couple minutes. Yeah. He basically said what I was going to say, the black bean mushroom chili. Because if you think this recipe was easy, Chuck, the black bean mushroom chili is probably the easiest recipe I make. And I say that because one time at a conference with Dr. Alan Goldhammer in Oxnard, California, I cooked it in my car. How do you cook chili in your car? Well, back then I had a car called a Toyota Matrix that instead of a cigarette lighter had an actual plug. There was nothing healthy to eat at the conference. So I went to Whole Foods. I got all the ingredients and I cooked it in my car in five minutes in the Instant Pot. It's so, so easy and it's delicious because, you know, sometimes everything in life is sort of a cost benefit analysis. And sure, you can... I don't want, I'm not looking for a way to complicate a recipe because when you think about it, 
is the return worth it? So for example, in the black bean mushroom chili, we're basically throwing in mushrooms, onion, which both come already chopped, which is why I was able to make it in the car. The canned tomatoes also came in jars, so I didn't need a can opener. The canned beans also came in aseptic packages, so I didn't need a can opener. The spices were easy. If I'm making it at home or teaching a class, I can teach how to saute without oil, and I can sit there for an extra half hour and show you how to saute the oil and caramelize it in the mushrooms. And if I were eating those, say, like on a plant burger, of course it's going to taste better. But in the context, context of a soup or a stew, can you really taste that extra half hour? It's not worth it to me. And, you know, I'm not a chefy chef in that, like, I will buy onions already chopped up. It, it, it may be a few pennies more, but I don't think it tastes any different than an onion I will chop, which is going to take me a lot longer. And it's going to make me cry and it's going to be more difficult. So I look for the, the not only the, the the cheapest way, but also the easiest way possible. And that is the easiest recipe. And it's interesting because that's the other recipe I make every month for our potluck because it it takes no time at all. So I'm I'm into quick and easy if, if I have my choice. I gotcha. And let's end on a poignant note. I want to get some help for an exam roomie by the name of Deb, who is looking for your advice here. Mm -hmm. And I think that uh, maybe the two of us can can combine and give a, a really good answer. Deb writes, I lost 50 pounds in the last two years, but succumbed to the sad diet and am ashamed of myself. I've started eating SOS, whole food plant-based again. But when I started eating this way years ago, I didn't get the sad cravings, but boy, am I ever getting them now. What would you recommend eating to start over again? Just a few veggies to start off? Or would you recommend fasting? Thanks in advance for your response. I've gone from sad to miserable, but now I want to be back on track again. And oh, by the way, she says she has regained 30 pounds. So let's see if we can get some help for Deb. Well, this is first of all, if, if you can try not to be ashamed of yourself or, or feel shame, because your situation is not unique that you have fallen prey or victim to the pleasure trap. The foods that you're talking about were designed to be addictive and to hook you, and it is not your fault. However, now that you know that you're vulnerable to this, it is your responsibility to change a few things if you want to see improvements like you had in the past. And so the first thing I would always say to somebody to change is your environment. So Dr. Doug Lyle always talks about you can't change your personality but you can change your environment. And one of the things he taught me when I was heavier, when I met him in 2011, is that we must work harder on our environment than we do ourselves. So you gotta get that stuff out of your house, at least until you neuroadapt again, until you start liking the taste of the whole natural food. That is the number one thing. Can people have success in an unclean environment? Some, but it's so much, so much more difficult. So that would be the first recommendation. Now you talked about fasting and, and not everyone can afford or take the time to go to a place like the True North Health Center. If you can, it's a wonderful place for healing hope and recovery. However, every time you go back to the indulgent food, this food doesn't taste as good. That's just normal. And you, you need a brief period of time or actually a longer period of time, depending on how far deep into the pleasure trap you dealt, dove for the food to start tasting good again. And so what I might say is if you're coming off the standard American diet, don't go to kale for breakfast. You know what I'm saying? Ha ease into it a little bit. Find things in the whole natural food diet without sugar, oil, and salt that you already like without embellishment. So maybe you like bananas. Maybe you like sweet potatoes. Maybe you like sweet potato fries in the air fryer. So at the beginning, instead of worrying about nutrient density and focusing on what the healthiest food is or the lower calorie foods, just get off the junk food first. Get And so eat in abundance of foods you like that are missing those uh chemicals of sugar, oil, salt. And of course, if, if animal products was an issue, that as well. Can take as little as 30 days. I know that sounds like a long time. Some people I've seen it could take 120 days, depending on what you were eating, how much. That's why going to a place like the True North Cell Health Center can be enormously helpful or taking the online 12 day McDougal program. So it, it kind of like gives you a little bit of a jump start. That doesn't mean you can't do it at home but you're really gonna struggle if your environment is not clean. So I have found that the best weapon against cravings, at least for sugar, are greens. And it sounds crazy because here I'm saying, well, don't, don't, don't eat steamed kale if you know, you're coming off the sad diet. 
But what we found in the Ultimate Weight Loss Program, really quite by accident, and then it was confirmed in Dr. Greger's book, How Not to Diet, that greens, meaning the dark green leafy gift, uh, vegetables, arugula, kale, mustard greens, collard greens, beet greens. Uh, I think broccoli would be considered a, a cruciferous vegetable, even cauliflower, even though it's white, has this compound in it called thylakoids. And they seem to not only block fat absorption, but turn off the hunger switch and really fight cravings for sweets. Now, if you're really craving sad, of course, you're not going to want to eat them. But if you do just kind of force yourself to eat some of them a little bit at every meal, maybe before a meal, you might find that your cravings are dialed down. Also, I'm not sure what your cravings are for, because for some people, it's more the sweet. For some people, it's more the salty. For some people, it's more the fatty. So what we want to do is find foods that will indulge that craving, but not in an indulgent way. So for example, for people, maybe if French fries were your thing, then I would suggest French fries in an air fryer, crunchy, delicious. You can make a homemade or store-bought SOS-free barbecue sauce. For people that sweet is their thing, it's very easy actually to make sweets delicious with just fruit. So the salt is actually the hardest, believe it or not, for most people. So give yourself grace. Know that uh, you know, you've done your best, bless the rest, and you did it before, you can do it again. You know, success as Willie Nelson said, is just getting up one more time than you've been knocked down. Know that this is a very hard problem that most people uh, struggle with it, actually almost everybody. Sometimes being in a group is, is, is helpful to people, you know, other people going through the same thing that you're doing. Um, but I wish you luck, but like, please try not to feel ashamed because uh, this, is, this is not a very easy problem to solve. These foods were designed to be addictive and um, almost everybody falls to their lure. Absolutely. And I wish that more people recognized just how great of a pull these foods have. I mean, when you look at the clinical research that shows that sugar can be as addictive as nicotine or cocaine, that tells you everything you need to know. You know, one is illegal. The other one comes with a warning label. But boy, sugar is just pushed on us and pushed on us and pushed on us and celebrated by and large. And so the game is kind of rigged in that regard. And so there is no shame. Uh, there, there should be no shame, but I'm sure that that's a feeling that you know all too well. Certainly, I was ashamed at one point of where I was with my health, my eating habits, um, and I just was completely out of control and didn't know what to do or where to turn. And so uh, I just hope that uh, this, this woman at some point finds that peace, but she is absolutely on the right track, and patience is the name of the game. And honestly, AJ, I could think that something like the, the peanut butter paradise parfait would be a great stepping stone. You know what? Baby steps, right? You know, absolutely. I, I think a lot of people, Chuck, don't realize that I didn't go from being 180 pounds to the weight I am now, like overnight. I wasn't an influencer or a blogger or a YouTuber. I was just a person living my life. If I had known that it was going to be relevant one day, I might have documented my journey. But when I got off sugar 21 years ago, I didn't get off sugar you know, Coke Slurpees for breakfast and Dr. Pepper Big Gulps and then have vegetables for breakfast. I did it in stages. It took me 27 months to lose 47 pounds. It didn't happen overnight. And so when I got off of Slurpees for breakfast with eight pumps of vanilla syrup, my first breakfast was a chocolate smoothie from my first book on process called The Nutrient Rich Chocolate Smoothie. It had 12 dates in it. That's really sweet. 12 deglet nor dates. Yeah, it had six ounces of spinach. It had two, two or three tablespoons of cocoa powder in it, two cups of blueberry, a banana. So it's actually a really sweet breakfast. And then later on, I switched to a green smoothie without the dates in the cocoa powder. So I went in, in gradual incremental stages. Also, I is one of the earlier questions, do I, do I modify my recipes? I try to eat lower calorie density desserts now, things that are more like banana, oat kind of bakey type of things rather than these rich ones. But this is what I was eating to get off sugar. Like I did not, to me, dates and these richer vegan desserts were the methadone that got me off the white sugar. And then gradually it just, my sweet tooth dialed down. So the weird thing now, is I would rather eat savory food. I mean, it, like if I'm eating dinner and like I'm still a little bit hungry and we might have this in the house, my favorite dessert is chips and salsa. Like I'd rather eat savory food now. And you know, if you would have asked me that 21 years ago, I said, this is never gonna happen. So give yourself not only grace, but give yourself time. 
Great advice there, and I know that there's going to be a lot more great advice coming with your vegan bundle that's only going to be available for a short time, March 1st through the 10th. $49 gets you how many dollars worth of knowledge? It's, I think we're at 7,500 now. This is something I do once a year with my friend and partner, Lisa Maris of Raw Food Romance. And it's incredible because all these creators, and I believe we have 125 now of some of your favorite uh, doctors like Dr. McDougall and Dr. Furman and Dr. Uh, Dr. Jim Loomis with Karen Dugan and so many really talented chefs like Chef Mark Reinfeld and in influencers like Nutmeg Notebook and just wonderful vegan chefs and recipe creators raw, cooked, some have kids, some don't, uh, yoga classes, uh, like programs. These wonderful people come together once a year with a new product. And if you priced it separately, you'd pay over $7,500. And people say, well, I don't need all that stuff. Well, even if there's just two or three things in the bundle, $49 is completely worth it. A lot of us creators created brand new programs and courses for it. And there's just so much excitement because we come together our, at the creators as a community. And from the first to the 10th, you're going to be online all day because all we're doing is each other's Instagrams and Facebooks and YouTubes. And when we, we, we build community, but we also build really a, a product that we're really, really proud of. I love it. So what a bargain. And to get so many names involved in that, I mean, you, you just mentioned the doc and chef, Jim and Karen. Uh, that's so great. Dr. Loomis and Karen Dugan, uh, man, that's just amazing. And cool. I know that we're going to make it really easy for everybody to partake in the bundle. There's a link down below in the show description or in the episode notes. Just go ahead and click on that. Boy, I mean, again, let's just break this down financially one more time. $7,500 value for $49. You tell me where you're going to find a healthier bargain than that age no, and that's the thing and people say well, we, you wouldn't believe how many emails we get at like 1201 after the 10th day the reason we can do this is because it's only once a year it's only these 10 days and then it's gone forever and it's funny because some of the programs in there actually cost 300 dollars, and you'll see on march 11th it'll be back to regular price just for one product so it's really it, it really is a wonderful value we've never had anybody say hey, I didn't like it. They love it. Even even if you have only one thing you love. Hey, I'll tell you the one thing I love today, peanut butter paradise parfait. Mm -hmm. Fun to say, even better to eat. I love it so much. So the book, Chef AJ, Sweet Indulgence, coming your way this summer. Be sure, of course, to check out Chef AJ live every day, Monday through Friday, live on your Facebooks, and follow on Instagram, the real Chef AJ and ChefAJ.com. You're all over the place, Chef. I try to be all at once too. everything, everywhere, all at once. Chuck, I do want to mention that not only did Dr. Neil Barnard graciously endorse the book, but this is the cupcake that started it all. And I tell the story in the book. I was creating a fancy schmancy. I was catering a fancy event in the Hollywood Hills. And Dr. Barnard was one of the guests. And I had made these cupcakes. This is the uh, peanut butter stuffed chocolate cupcake with peanut butter chocolate ganache. And it, somehow he didn't get one. And they, we ran out, there were 200 cupcakes, but luckily I saved one. And just as he was leaving, I gave, got, gave it to him. He, he ate it in the car and he actually wrote me a handwritten thank you note uh, for that cupcake. And he remembered it years later. And that was just, he's such a kind person to do that. Well, I mean, that's a life-changing cupcake. Just looking at that thing. Hold on, let me pull you up full screen one more. Yeah, that. Ladies and gentlemen, is a cupcake. What is that? Well, we can make that for your birthday, the peanut butter chocolate uh, cheesecake. It's a frozen dessert that will knock your socks off. I used to make for one of my celebrity clients in L.A. My God. I might be flying out to your house for my birthday. Birthday present for myself. Wow. And we could do stuff in the kitchen. That'd be great. Bet. All right. Let's see if we can make that happen. Holy Moses. The peanut butter calls to me, AJ. <laughs> that's so good thank you so much for your time you've been so generous i can't wait for the book and the bundle of course march 1st through the 10th click that link ladies and gentlemen it is the healthiest bargain of your life aj thanks for being here thank you chuck and thank you everyone for watching best of health to you If your health IQ was a couple of points higher than it was a few minutes ago, go ahead and like this video or subscribe to the YouTube channel. And to take it even higher, head over to Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your favorite shows. Look for the exam room by the Physicians Committee. Hit the subscribe button there as well and help to make your world a healthier place.